This is a part of my series of project videos where I take you step by step through a particular project. Uh, this is something I found in a recent woodworking magazine, Scroll Saw Woodworking and Crafts to be exact. And uh, it was something that looked like uh, it would be kind of fun to do. And that is making a dice tower. And you can see the uh, what it looks like. I, I'm not going to do it in walnut like this one was done. While it's 20 hours a board foot right now, um, I'm going to make it out of poplar, which is five dollars a board foot, and paint it. And besides, if I paint it with a gray, it'll look more like a castle anyway. So, every time I start a new project, something that I've never made before, the first thing I do is read through the instructions to have a pretty good idea, an overall picture of what I'm doing. Uh, you're less likely to make errors, mistakes that way. But I can tell you that I make mistakes anyway, as we all do, and that's okay. Usually when I make something for the first time, I'll only make one of them. And if I like it, I like the project, I'll make more later on. But sometimes I make mistakes the first time around, which you're going to find. Uh, I will do on this because I'm taping this, I, I'm recording this beginning after I've already done some of the work. Here's something you want to think about when you're, when, whenever you're processing. These particular, the tower front, back, and the sides, I'm going to need two fronts, two backs, and two sides. And they are eight and an eighth. So, let's mark eight and an eighth off on our wood here. I like these up. Hard ruler like this when I can. You need a longer dimension to use the tape measure. So there's my eighth and an eighth. Eighth and an eighth. And a square. And. But I want an eighth and an eighth long. So let me cut that. Use the, uh, the saw for that. Always use hearing protection on this type of equipment. I just use the first one to measure the second one. So I know they're the same. One of those woodworking tricks I learned over the years is um, measure, but when you need a whole bunch, when you need more than one part that are the same, measure the first one and either use a stop block or use the first one to measure the second one. Here I have the, the, uh, the two tops for the, um, the, the two sides for the tower, the front back and the tower. All right, now I've got three pieces, and I know they're all the same length. I found that if you measure and cut, measure and cut, measure and cut, uh, sometimes you'll end up, let's say the first one is a, you're a 32nd of an inch off, which is not hard to beat. And then you do another one, and it's a 32nd, but the other direction. And now you've got a 16th of an inch difference and a 16th of an inch is uh, not a lot, but it's noticeable, and you're going to have a problem when you try try fitting things together later. So, these, I know I have, these are all the same length. Now what I want to do is I need a front and back to the tower that are uh, three and five inches, so we'll have to go to the table saw for that. Okay, I need From the back that are three and five eighths, I believe I said. I can use the ruler on the side of the table, but I really prefer to use this when I can. Three and five eighths. And even if this is a little bit off, as long as I'm cutting all at the same size, at the same time, they're going to be the same width. And that's the important thing. All right, let's cut these. Don't need the blade quite so high. 
when you're working with small pieces like this, you want to use a push stick. I always use the safety equipment. I use this splitter and the blade guard. Keeps my hand away from the blade. And you notice I waited until the, the uh, blade stopped before I went to pull the out. I could have pushed it all the way through, but then I got to pick it up off the floor. So what I tend to do on the, uh, on the uh, last piece, at least, is to uh, just hold it in place and or maybe push it past the blade and stop there. But I let the blade stop before I pick anything up off the table. So those, those are my two. That's my back and my front. Let me see what I need for the side. I need two and three eighths for the sides, and that scrap that was left was only two and an eighth. We'll make those two cuts. All right, I've got my two sides and my back and front. Okay, we've got a front and a back that are identical except for that cut out there. And since they're only quarter inch thick, it's easy to cut more than one at a time. So I'm going to uh, tape these together and um, I'm going to make the cuts. I can cut them both at the same time, which is called stack cutting. There's a number of ways of stack cutting. One of the most uh, common is to take a painter's tape and tape the two pieces together like this. You want to make sure that they're taped securely enough that they're not going to move. The back is just around so it's not going to go anywhere. The front is completely covered. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some spray adhesive on this. All right, I've got some adhesive on the back of that. Line it up. These are square corners. And uh, so what I did is I did both sides first. Now I'll go in and rather than have them at 290 degree turns, because I got those sides cut, just going like this. And you can see I can get a very nice, very nice straight corners doing it that way. That takes care of the uh, the top. Need to remove the tape, but I don't want to. Oh yeah, that'll work. I want I want to leave the pattern on the top. So for the front. Cut out on the front, front of the tray. Now, one thing, if you haven't done any scroll sawing before, one thing you'll learn is that it leaves a certain amount of, see the stick, what's sticking up there? It always leaves a little bit of uh, fuzzies, tear out, whatever you want to call it. And so I'll do just a little bit of touch up sanding on this. Okay, I did that. A little quick sanding there. Went to the instructions and they say to glue the uh, the sides to the back, which is easy enough. Let me go show you that. 
doesn't want to stay. All right. Here's the back. And the, the sides are going like that. And uh, we need a way to find a way to clamp these together. And Okay, I've got a set of corner clamps I use frequently. And um, you see what that looks like. There's a clamp that I guess pressure on either side there. I buy white glue by the gallon since I use a lot of it. And I just put it in a smaller applicator since it's a lot easier to use. And you can just use your fingers to spread it. like that. Just get up at the bottom, tighten it up. Another one there, nice and tight. And put, let's see, the nice thing is that holds it at a perfect 90. Clamp here, called the F clamp because it looks like the letter F. Put one of those in the middle. Give some pressure there. And unfortunately, because this thing is narrow, uh, it's small. The clamp I can't put clamps on both sides at the same time. So I'll put that on there. I'll let it dry an hour or two, and I'll come back and clamp the other side. Okay, the next step is to put a ramp in at the bottom. And uh, it's the same width as the inside of this, which came to about three and a half inches, I believe. Uh, but anyway, and then to cut a 45 degree angle on each end, which I did. And uh, test fit, it seems to fit pretty well. And I'm going to put some glue on the, the two sides, this side, this side, and the 45 on the back there. And then put a clamp or two here. Hold it in place and give that a little while to, to glue up while I make the other two parts. The next step calls for these two little, I think she called them paddles, but anyway, they're cut on a 30 degree angle like that. One on each side, and then they'll be glued to the side and to the back. And when that glue is dry, then I'll put the, put the, uh, the front on, but... Uh, Took a little bit of uh, it took a little bit for me to figure out exactly how to do that, but it wasn't difficult. I'm going to glue those parts in next. I goofed. Well, I've done it from time to time. I did it before. I did it on this one. Uh, you know, I think you can see by the seams on that that the sides, the way the sides overlap the back, and I had the front already cut out. But when I put in those two uh, little ramps there and this one on the bottom I put them in um, not realizing the way that the top had to fit so they were glued they were ready to go and then I went to put the, put the top on and realized the top was not going to fit the way it was put together so I just I found a piece of a uh, piece of quarter inch maple I had rather than slice up some more uh, poplar I'm going to paint this anyway and uh, rather than have the sides on the outside, um, I had the top overlap both sides. If you don't know how was, what the plans looked like, uh, you'll never see the mistake. And all right, there's going to be a bottom to this base, and uh, I've got plenty. Uh, I got, I think, I just used some quarter-inch particle board. It's going to be painted anyway, so it won't matter what material it's made out of. And uh, there'll be a bottom to it. The uh, little castle tower sits like this. You toss the dice in the top. They bounce around inside. Come out down here and roll in here. And this enclosure keeps them from going anywhere. So the whole point is to keep from the dice rolling off the table and you having to go find them. Um, overall... Uh, not a bad project. Uh, I learned a couple things from it, which I usually do. That's why I usually make one prototype. And if I learn anything from the prototype, I 
take that into consideration when I'm making more of them, and that's probably what I'll do. Next up will be to paint it, and then I'll show you the final outcome. Okay, here's the finished tower. The tower comes out, sits inside the tray. It uh, stores inside the tray if you want to take up the space. When you, when you use it, you set it up like that. 